topics. So today's video is about predicting sound in large spaces. We are using a software called CAT, which is a Swedish software. So it's one of the top three softwares in the world for acoustics prediction. And uh, the example that I have here is a project that, I've been, uh, that I was involved a couple of years ago. It's a theater in Portugal for around 250 persons. So it's a massive building. Um, over here, we, we have the stage with this large area over here. And then we have uh, two seating um, areas for the audience. There's one over here. And then on the upper side of the building, there's another um, audience, which is on the first floor. And uh, the geometry of the um, ceiling is actually quite, uh, um, quite uh, um, interesting, because if you can see over here, let me try to, to, to shift here the, the 3D model. So this is already the existing structure. The theater was a building from the 40s or 50s, so I've been told, and now they want to remodel the acoustics of the room, and we have to redesign this model to study the acoustics. So uh, we use this software CAT because it allows us to study different parameters in the room, which are not possible to study using an Excel spreadsheet. So we can move the um, sound sources in the room. So A0 is one of the sound sources. And 0, 01, 0, 02, and 0, 03 are sitting points in, in, on, the, on the audience of the room. So we can change the characteristics and the location of the sound source in the stage. And then we can predict the acoustics in, on each one of these points. Of course, we can, you know, with CAT, I can define, OK, this point over here, I don't want to study the acoustics of the room uh, uh, near the stage. Maybe I want to study over this point over here so I can move this point zero one to the middle of the, of the audience. So every, everything is possible. So the first thing that we need to do is to create the design of the room in, in terms of the geometry. This can be done in two ways. So you, we can use SCAT, but it's very difficult to do so. Or we can use SketchUp and use a third party plugin to export to CAT. So that's what we usually do. We design the room in 3D in SketchUp and then we export to CAT. So this is the finished room, as you can see. Let me uh, rotate it. So, okay, let me see. Okay. So as you can see, two sitting audiences. And of course, when we export the room into CAT, it only has information about the geometry of the room. There's no information about the characteristics of the materials. So we need to add that information uh, into our model. So I'm going to show you not how to add, but I'm going to show you the characteristics of the of the room after our acoustical treatment. So let me see if I can find the file. Just give me a moment to. This one, okay. So, uh, CAT is very is, is a bit complicated to use, to be honest. Um, so, on this part of the program, what we see is the different surfaces of the room, okay. And here we can see the characteristics of the of each one of the surfaces. Surfaces. So, the black absorption, the black line, is an absorption characteristics line. And the red line is the scattering, which is re related to diffusion. So what we need to do to every single one of these surfaces over here, we need to define the characteristics of the absorption, and we need to define the characteristics of the diffusion, or mainly, mainly speaking, the scattering characteristics. And CAT only uses certain octave bands. So it, it uses uh, octave bands from 125 hertz up to um up to 4k and then 8 8k and 16k they are um extrapolated so if i uh, start you know if i start uh, changing the surfaces of the room you can see that 
get to the characteristics of this of the um, of the um, uh, the, the acoustic characteristics, characteristics of the surfaces are being changed in, in CAT over here because we have actually predefined all this information. So let me see. So for instance, here on this surface over here, which is near the audience, we decided to use um, acoustical diffusers to increase spaciousness and uh, sound intimacy. So as you can see, the absorption over here is quite low. But the characteristics, the diffusion, the scattering characteristics are quite high uh, from a certain uh, um, um, starting frequency. Now, of course, in a space like this, it is important to define some elements for absorption, some elements for reflection, and some elements for diffusion. Then, um, CAT also allows, you, allow, allow us to study uh, a plenitude of parameters. So, for instance, let me show you. I can study the reverberation time of the room. So, with different, with different uh, um, approaches. So, the, there's an I-ring, which is one of the formulas. We have the Sabin formula, which is the most... Uh, the most uh, used one. Uh, there are different uh, extrapolations and different uh, predictions for the reverberation time of the room. So we are basically aiming at something around uh, uh, 1.3, 1.4 seconds for a, for a, um, for a theater for speech and sound purposes. Of course, Sabine and Irene gives us lower values, but in these specific cases. Uh, um, uh, this formula usually underperform the um, re reverberation time in the room. So they give values that are actually lower than the values that we are going to measure once the, um, once the project is done. Then we can study, you know, there's so many stuff to study on, on with CAT. So we can, for instance, we can study um, echograms, see how the sound decays uh, over a specific uh, um, octave bands. Um, this is a early echogram which shows the different reflections of the room coming from the different surfaces. This is important since we need to make sure there are no sudden reflections or there so that the sound kind of decays in a smoothly way. And of course, there's much more. There's, let me see what is this one. So this is the um, um, sound pressure level in the room. So we want to make sure that the people on the last rows of the seat uh, don't have much variation compared to the person, to someone that is seated on the first part, on, on the part near the stage. So we don't want someone to hear, let's say, 100 decibels on the first row, and someone is going to hear 80 decibels on the last row. So we want to actually have a small gap in between these areas. Um, let me see more, more stuff that I can show you around here. So this is SPL. For a specific for, for a specific room, here we see our sound source, and here's the decay of the room. The actual extrapolate, I think it shows around 10 dB, 10 dB of difference, which is okay. It's it's uh, significant, but it's uh, acceptable. Okay, so CAT is the main module of the software, but there's another module which is a more advanced uh, module module on this uh, specific software. That that is called TUCT. I don't know how you spell it in. in I, I call it TUCT. Not sure if I'm doing it right. But okay. But TUCT is basically um, an improvement to CAT. It's an additional module that was implemented a few years ago, and it allows us to do um, to do more advanced prediction of the sound. For instance, here we have our our 3D model. Okay, let me just try to put this increase a little bit okay and here we can for instance see the incident sound in a in a 
3D view instead of using a 2D, 2D view. This is a tri-dimensional tri view, and we can, of course, we can uh, we can, of course, change the characteristics of the of the sound source. So I place the sound source basically at the middle of the stage. Here we can see that the sound source is only directional because what happens is that uh, I need to make sure that what I'm using as a sound source uh, in a room is going to be replicated when the, um, the, um, the space is done and someone is going to measure the room uh, with the actual sound source. And for this kind of measurements, um, it's mandatory to use omnidirectional sound sources to study reverberation time and other kinds of param parameters in a room. So basically what I did was to use also an omnidirectional sound source in our model. Of course, it's possible to use, for instance, uh, a specific loudspeaker in the room. Uh, it's much more difficult to work in those kind of scenarios. I actually don't do it. I usually only use omnidirectional sound sources and see how the room behaves. So it's possible to um, to study uh, this kind of uh, situations. Okay, so this is one of the situations that that the new, this new model from Kret allows us to study in more detail. Then we have more interesting stuff. For instance, we have a time trace. And this allows us to see how the sound propagates in the room as well. Okay, so I'm going to do something like this. Hold on, so this is quite tricky to have. And for instance, we can study we can study the start. So basically what this the what we do with this tool is that we predict how the how the sound is going to impact on the walls. So as you can see, I'm increasing here the time segment of the room and I'm seeing the sound rays hitting each one of the surfaces of the room. And then they, they change color because they are actually decreasing in terms of uh, sound power because uh, the surfaces they have absorption and so they are dec the, the reflections are decreasing their intensity uh, let me just go back okay so i'm using uh, um, one order one order basically this is the basically this this shows the number of reflection in the, in the room so if i put this at six it's going to show one ref reflection after the other up until six reflections. If I if I put this at one reflection, it's going to the sound the sound ray is going to hit one of the surfaces. It's going to reflect, but then I don't have any information once the sound hits a second surface. Um, of course, we can also change this into in terms of different octave bands. So I'm usually I usually study this at 500 hertz or one kilohertz, which is usually the standard. I think the standard is actually uh, 500 hertz. Um, and so let me see. If I three hertz, so, so show faces. So as you can see here, the sound as it the floor, as it the sorry, as it the ceiling changed the color to blue, and I'm going to keep on going. Oh, it disappeared. Not sure. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. I, I, I don't use this tool that much, but I think it's, it's quite interesting to use. So basically, this tool allows allow us to see where the sound hits and if, if there's any bad reflection uh, coming uh, into the room again. Then we have a, an image source model. This is basically another tool that kind of does the same, but it shows the echogram of the room. So, what I have, what, order, color, no. okay, order, color, order. So, as you can see, color, order, red, it's dir direct sound, uh, green is first order reflections, blue, second order, yellow, third order reflections. And uh, show reflection class, show smooth it, okay, sorry about that, whoops, 
no, sorry, just just vanished. I need to restart. Okay, here, here we go again. Sorry about that. So uh, as I was saying, let, let me just let me just increase the increase the, the window. Okay. Start. So here, what I'm doing, I'm studying the um, reflections of the room, but having in consideration the different sounds, so the, the dif different receivers. So for instance, zero one, I'm studying the acoustics of the room over this point in terms of the reflections. If I change to zero two is this point over here. And zero three is this, is this point over here. And as you can see, the echogram is changing and I can see which of the places has uh, a smoother uh, character characteristic. So it makes sense that the, the um, position near the sound source has, has, has uh, um, less impact in terms of the reflections that uh, point that is further away from the, from the stage. Um, this is the, okay, this is the time uh, span, so I can put something up to, I don't know, I think 100, 100 milliseconds is okay. Uh, this is, I'm showing the sound sources, and I'm showing the paths of the sound. As you can see, I can change over here, let me just try to zoom, put this in a better way for you to, so you can understand. So, red line direct sound to sound source zero one and then i can see second second uh, uh, line is this green one this has this one uh, is a first order reflection and then i can start to uh, see the different reflections over here so if i go further down into our timeline for instance uh this uh, yellow uh, line is the reflection from the from the um, walls of the stage up until our uh, receiver, and this is oh no, this is uh, I mean I can uh, of course I can increase the number of reflections. Up, no, I have, actually, actually I cannot. The, the, the maximum is, is three, but of, as you can see, this is so many so much information that you that you, that, you, that you can. Uh, extrapolate from this software that is sometimes it is too complex so we really need to know what our objective is in terms of our starting point and our ending point and it's very easy for us to just get overwhelmed with the information and not think about the, ba the basics of the room so the basics of the room basically are for instance uh, guaranteeing that the reverberation time is added, added quite to the goal of the room. Uh, we need to make sure that the sound is distribu distributed evenly in the room, there's no bad reflections. And um, of course, uh, this is very time consuming. So for, I mean, for me to do this kind of project, it would probably take me around two or three weeks uh, just to um, not only to do the geometrical model, but to fine-tune all the information, uh, place the correct characteristics of the absorption and diffusion in a room. Uh, it's always great to have acoustical measurements of the actual situation and then fine-tune the model that I'm building with that information, but most of the times that might not be possible. So there's lots of second-guessing uh, in this kind of software and it's, it's quite... Uh, quite um, quite demanding to to work with it um, this is um, okay this is a uh, oh, sorry about that this is the pixel I think I showed you this one yeah so this is the incident so I already showed you this one uh, to finalize there's um there's a walk through convolver 
I don't have this uh, enabled in my um, in my cut in my, in my cat edition. It, 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 able, it, able, it basically enables enables you to walk through our model and uh, make uh, an our our realization process. So you, you can actually hear sound uh, inside a cat model. And then there's the wave player. This is a very basic organization model. I'm not going to show how this works, but the main idea is for us to uh, grab a, a dry sound and then basically place our dry sound in our room and see how it extra extrapolates in terms of our ears and the listening uh, in the, and the listening uh, experience. I knew, uh, so honestly, I don't use that that much. I'm quite mathematical and scientific in that matter. I prefer to deal with numbers and uh, see the reflections and optimize our uh, space and, uh, and our study with, uh, with the uh, numerical information. But I know some people use our, our realization methods as well. Um, so I don't have much more to add. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I hope you, you had a glimpse of acoustics uh, room acoustics models prediction works and now we can have this uh, amazing software to predict the acoustics of the room. Thank you so much and uh, please subscribe the video that the channel the channel if you like the, the video. Thank you.